Hi, and welcome to this episode of Brainy Moms. I'm Dr. Amy Moore, and Terry Miller is on vacation this week, so I have a visiting guest host, Sandy Zamalis. Sandy is a married mom of two, a former homeschooler, probation officer, and USA swimming coach. She's a board-certified cognitive specialist and owner of Learning RX Stanton Harrisonburg in Virginia. Sandy, I am so excited for you to co-host with me again today. I am so excited to be back. I had so much fun the last time. Who knew? Being on a podcast was fun. I'm a huge podcast listener and Brainy Moms is on my regular rotation, so I am just thrilled. (laughs) Well, we're glad that you made time out of your busy training schedule to join us today. So Sandy and I are really excited to introduce you to our podcast guest, the parenting strategist, Lillian Riki. Lillian is a married mom of two boys, the author of six books, a former primary school teacher, a parenting seminar and workshop facilitator, a frequent expert guest on TV and radio, and an advanced trainer in the nurtured heart approach a heart-centered way of communicating that she is passionate about sharing with families. Welcome, Lillian. We're so glad you're here. (laughs) Thank you, Dr. Amy and Sandra. It's absolutely awesome to be here all the way from Australia with you today. Uh, Yes, I'm so excited. I'm still impressed you got up early to meet. (laughs) (laughs) I'm intrigued by your story, especially how your son's health challenges led you on your journey. And I can't wait for you to share that with our listeners. Can you tell us more about what it means to be a parenting strategist and how your son's challenges inspired you on this path? Absolutely. Well, I had no intention of being a parenting strategist. Let me put it that way. I'm a teacher by trade. Um, I started teaching in the early 1980s, so yes, giving away my age. And my, I had uh, already had a uh, seven and a half year old son when my second son was born. And unlike my first son, this um, younger son was extremely hyperactive and just a very busy little baby. If he wasn't sort of feeding or sleeping, he was screaming. By the time he was a little, you know, a little toddler, it was quite evident that he was more challenging than the average child. So he was uh, diagnosed as early as three and a half years old with childhood depression, ADHD and ODD. And back then, so he's now 28. So I'm talking about over 25 years ago. And back then there just wasn't as much kind of holistic information as there is now. I I guess you would say I'm quite a holistic person when it comes to health and wellness. And sadly for us, uh, well, I feel it was sad back then, was the only recommendations given to us, Sandra and um, Amy, was medication. So initially antidepressants and then stimulant drugs. And I'm like, my son is three and a half and you want to recommend, you know, antidepressants for him. It just did not align. So we really set upon our own journey of exploration. Um, We had seen, you know, general uh, doctors, uh, pediatricians, psychologists, psychiatrists, counsellors, and the only recommendations that any of them could, you know, suggest was medication. So we had to go and seek our own own answers. And, And the reason I'm now a parenting strategist is because of that journey that we went on and the the trials and tribulations that we had. I, I've given myself a pseudo um, uh, um, qualification of a, T, uh, a, a degree in TTP, which is tried and tested parenting. So <laughs> I just I just wanted to share and people wanted to hear what we were doing with our son. So it's been a roller coaster journey and um, it's been a, an interesting journey over the years and we've had our peaks and troughs. It's been a real roller coaster ride. Sounds like it. Yeah. Um, And so I actually have three kids that are neurodiverse and I was a teacher before I was a psychologist and can absolutely resonate with with your Mm -hmm. plight um, for sure. Those sleepless nights and all of that frustration. So (laughs) what made you want to go from um, tackling your personal journey, right, to sharing that um, with the world through your books and your workshops and seminars? What, what made that transition for you? Well, I love to help people 
always, you know, with, with whether it be in business or personal life. And, and when we went through such adverse challenges, so it's really challenging for me in this short time to express to you how challenging our son was. So for example, when he was in a preschool childcare, he went from center to center to center. Five, we had five childcare centers in the town that we lived in. And he went to all of them because they just couldn't cope with him. Mm -hmm. So his behavior was very, very extreme. And we started our journey out, you know, changing our diet, you know, looking at food and food additives and eliminating, you know, sugar and wheat and dairy, et cetera. We then looked at, you know, that his toxicity, you know, just the chemicals around the home. And we looked at nutritional support and all of those sorts of things. So in his earlier years, we got what I would call good results changing more the physical sort of stuff and people wanted to know what we were doing what we were using so we just started sharing we started doing small seminars we had people asking us to come and share with them and we started doing my husband and I probably did hundreds of seminars um, over the years to, to groups as large as you know many many hundreds and, and as small as 20 or 30 and and we were having um, really good results with him in his his sort of what, what we call primary school years here in Australia, so five to 12. And then when adolescence hit, whew, <laughs> the challenges that we had when he was younger, 10 x like we really got into some really deep, dark places with him. And we finally found um, um, a mentor that helped us through that. And just because it was so transformational, I really just wanted to share it with other people. I really just knew that there were so many parents like us that, who were hurting and I really wanted to share it. So my parenting work has come in, you know, um, I guess over the last 20 plus years because I've had other businesses as well and I've been in and out of my parenting work. But I'm really back now with an absolute passion and wanting to stand on the rooftops to share what I know because I know so many families need what I've discovered. Yeah, they really, really do. Um, I mean, I, I think the statistics now are, is up, Amy, you can back this up for me, but is one in five uh, yeah. kids and adults really struggle uh, with attention or dyslexia related kinds of issues. Yeah. Um, Lillian, you were trained in Howard uh, Glasser's Nurtured Heart Approach, which at its essence seems to teach a philosophy and practice of creating healthy relationships with children. Can you tell us more about this approach and why it's so powerful? I love it. I love, love, love it. Um, I was originally introduced to the Nurtured Heart approach when I was at, actually at a, um, like a, a youth training day. I, and I met another psychologist and she sort of said, well, Lillian, what do you do? And I was kind of explaining what I did. And this is what we'd learned from our prior mentor. And she goes, oh, is that the nurtured heart approach? And I'm like, no, it's kind of the Lily and Ricky approach. And she said, oh, it sounds so much like the nurtured heart approach. So being the, you know, the curious person I was, I went home and Googled the nurtured heart approach. And I found all of this, like I spent a whole day Googling and listening. And I'm like, oh, this is amazing. This is so in alignment with what I already do. But it, what I was doing wasn't the nurtured heart approach, but it was sort of similar sort of thinking. So it's a really funny story because it was already very well known in the States, but not very well known in Australia. And I reached out to somebody in the States and, and they said, look, we haven't really launched in Australia, but we have a psychologist who is about to launch. And I'm like, oh, I'd love to connect with this person. They could be anywhere in Australia and they happen to live five minutes away from me. Wow. Anyway, so I started training in it. Um, with him and then Howard Glasser came out to Australia in 2014 and I did my certified training intensive and last week I've just done my advanced trainers course so in a nutshell for me the nurtured heart approach is a way of being it's a way of relationship and communicating we've learned and I, I, I understood this before but I love Howard Glasser's term that many of us are parenting upside down and that might be a weird thing to say, but we are focusing on the stuff in our parenting and particularly for us parents with challenging children, we're focusing on and energizing and relationshiping on the stuff where the kids are not being compliant, where they're not being cooperative, where they're not following the rules. And that's where we come in and give so much energy. 
it's kind of like we are our children's favorite toys and our children are very smart and they get to figure out how we, we best work when our bells and whistles come on, when our arms move and when we come alive. And for many of us, as I said, especially those of us with intense and challenging children, we come alive when the kids are doing the wrong thing. And then when they're doing the right thing, we're quiet. We don't energize them. We don't give them, you know, the juicy praise and recognition. So the, how, the um, nurtured heart approach is based on three stands. Absolutely no. So not giving energy to the negative. Absolutely yes. Finding every opportunity to come in with not just good job, well done, which we call kind of junk food praise, but to come in with really nourishing, beautiful recognitions for what they're doing or what they're moving towards doing. And then the third aspect of it is um, absolute clarity. So having clarity on your rules and, and what you'll stand for, and also teaching what we call the reset. So to sort of get yourself back when you're moving off track, you know, back into the zone of moving towards success. So it, it's, fo its focus really is on creating um, what we call inner wealth in children, you know, just building, it's more than self-esteem and self-worth. It's really just you know, building a greatness within the children and, and knowing that, you know, that um, we recognise them for the, for the amazing people they are. It's, it's a beautiful approach. It sounds wonderful. I love the, the reset part at the end too, because yeah. none of us are perfect, right? Exactly. So we're going to get off, get off track. <laughs> yes. So I love that, that sort of grace filled end of recentering and trying to get, um, back into the groove of how to and build a healthy relationship. Yeah. Yeah. For us <laughs> parents. So yeah. often, you know, we, we could be heightened and, you know, that's when we really come in with our negativity. Right. But we have to center ourselves. We had to have to reset ourselves and teach the children to do the same. Yeah. So I'm going to date myself now. Um, but when I was student teaching back in the eighties, um, early nineties, I learned uh, Glasser's choice theory in the classroom and oh. found him to be a genius. And so in terms of being able to positively manage classrooms of young children, um, he was the theorist that I gravitated towards um, because um, he gave children so much respect, right? It was such a respectful way of approaching behavior. Mm -hmm. um, so when I saw that uh, the Nurtured Heart Approach was written by Glasser as well, I was super excited to hear more. Um, well, he's you. written about 15 books now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's such a beautiful man. He, I know him quite well and he's, he's so beautiful and heart-centered and he just really wants children to flourish he wants children to feel recognized and and he wants us you know parents and educators to have great relationships with our kids which at the end of the day that's what it's all about like I look at my parenting journey and I can tell you with total transparency that we could have gone a very different path with our youngest son like we <laughs> Things could be very different. And as, as things stand, we have the most amazing relationship with him. My husband and he actually went into business together. So they have an amazing, successful business um, as electricians. He got kicked out of school at, at 15, you know, was told he would never get a job, would never get an apprenticeship, would never achieve anything. And um, because of the work we started doing with him, he said, you just watch this space. He went out and made it happen. And he's an amazing, an amazing man, just so heart-centered, so beautiful. And we still practice the nurtured heart approach here. You know, as adults, we still, you know, use the, the recognitions and acknowledge each other. It's, a, it's just a beautiful way of relationshiping in general, not, not just with young kids. So for parents to find out about it, do they need to go to a seminar or how, like, how can they start bringing that type of relationshiping into their families? Well, there's a lot of information on the Nurtured Heart approach. You can just Google like I did, but personally, I feel doing something live and interactive is really beneficial. So I run... Um, 
workshops here and I run training courses. I'm actually just about to, well, we just did our second last um, session this week. So we've got one more session left of my current um, run that I'm doing, my current course of the Nurtured Heart Approach. And then on um, May the 12th, we're doing uh, an introductory masterclass, which is just a free masterclass. So I can certainly uh, send you the link for that. Um, and people can just come in and have a listen. And if they register for it, they will be able to, if not see it live, um, if the timing's not right, then they can watch the replay. And I love to um, work personally with small groups because I feel that each parent can or educator can actually bring something to the group as well as, as myself. I also partner with my oldest son, uh, who's a naturopath, herbalist and nutritionist. So because I feel parenting is very holistic and the nurtured heart approach is definitely the aspect that I use for the parenting and relationshiping side of things. But because of our experience with my son and just speaking to so many other families, there are, you know, there are other areas that I feel need to be considered as well, you know, like the physical health, looking at diet, looking at the gut, looking at, at food, at water, at toxins, looking at emotional health and well-being. So we incorporate a lot of that in as well. Um, so what my son and I do together is quite unique. I teach the nurtured heart approach and the parenting stuff, and he comes in with the health and wellness as well. Um, which is a really good kind of, yeah, combo. That's an exciting combination for sure. Mm. Is, is there one tip, an easy tip from the Nurtured Heart Approach that you could share with our listeners that they could walk away from today and, and put to use? Absolutely. And it comes back to the upside down parenting. I feel that it's just not energizing the negativity. So no matter whether your children are fairly cooperative and compliant or whether they're really out there and uncooperative, you know, we, we do focus often on the stuff that's not going well. So my one tip would be energize what you want rather than what you don't want. So don't give energy to the, the disrespect, the, 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 the behavior that is not in alignment, you know, give you know, just don't give that energy. And there are certain techniques that we teach within the Nurtured Heart Approach to help you do that. So, but give, just focus on what you can energize and give energy to. So what is the child doing well, or even the baby steps <clears throat> that they're making towards us doing something well? Because sometimes with very intense and challenging children, parents say, but I don't get many opportunities to, to recognize them for their success. But we teach them to look for the smallest opportunities with the little baby steps and even as, as much as um, uh, what we call hijacking. So make, you know, make, make a, a little plan to find a way to make them be successful in something that they were going to do anyway and then recognize them for that. So yeah, just be aware of your energy. Where are you placing your energy and where are you not placing your energy? I love that. I used that. to call that finding the glimmers. Like um, sometimes yeah. as a parent, you, you do tend to focus on the negative and it takes real mal effort to try to see something good. Even if it seems benign or little, um, you know, just, I love the way you pass that so nicely to your sister. <laughs> You know, even though the rest of the day might have been battle central, uh, just finding the glimmers, it helped me as a parent too, uh, to see, look for positive things. It was a little too easy for me um, early in my parenting to find the negative things. So I love that. It's not because what kids want, Sandra, is they want connection. They want relationships. And they'll get it any which way. Yes. And, and some kids learn very young to to get that connection and that relationship in an upside down way. And that's what they continue doing. And then, and then unless you have the strategies to undo that, then it becomes, you know, very challenging to overcome that pattern with, with the way that children connect and, and get relationship from you. That makes sense. Absolutely. So do you find with, in your, you know, mentoring families that sometimes it gets worse before it gets better when you're kind of transitioning these new parenting relationship um, skills? It definitely can because kids are like, whoa, 
I'm used to getting attention and energy in this way and you're trying to get it in another way. I'm kind of used to that way. But you know what? Eventually, like there was one story, if I can quickly tell you, that, that Howard shared, which I thought was just so simple and so profound. So he was mentoring with a family of a very, very, very intense little boy. And from the parents' perspective, there were never any opportunities for them to recognise him. And he was in trouble at school, he was in trouble at home, and he was just always in that negative space. So they tried one of Howard's techniques that we call kind of hijacking. And the, the kid was, you know, getting in the car um, to go to school and he was just about to close the door. So dad said, let's just say the little boy's name's Johnny. Johnny, I need you to close the door just as he's about to close the door, hence the hijacking. So the door closes and then dad comes in with the beautiful, Johnny, I love how you listened when I asked you to close the door. That shows me that you're respectful and that you know you've been cooperative and that you are ready to get in and, and get to school and have a great day. Thank you, I really appreciate that. And the kid's like, oh, I, I was gonna close, you know, like, and the next thing, the seatbelt, same thing, you know, Johnny, I need you to put your seatbelt on. Oh, thank you so much, Johnny for, you know, and like, and they just started hijacking him. And within weeks, this little boy had just transformed because he was like, I kind of like this toy better than the other toy. Like I kind of like the feeling that I'm getting, this energy that I'm getting. So, and I think that's what happens, you know, a lot for, for kids, particularly who have not had a lot of positive before. They just really crave it. But you're right, Sandra, sometimes they um, reject it initially because it's different and they're used to getting their energy in a certain way. So you, you do have to be consistent and persistent, but most Mostly, I feel that kids love it and respond really well to it. I'm, I'm excited about that. I yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. It's, hey, it's so amazing. we need to take a break um, and hear a word from our sponsor. Did you know that more than 6 million children in America have been diagnosed with ADHD? Many of them struggle in school because of their condition. What if I told you that poor attention may not be the primary cause of their struggles? In a research study with more than 5,000 people with ADHD, we found their working memory, long-term memory, and processing speed were less efficient than their attention skills. So an intervention that only targets attention might miss the opportunity to work on those other skills we need to think and learn. Learning RX can help you identify which skills may be keeping your child from performing at their best. In fact, we've worked with more than 100,000 children and adults who wanted to think and perform better. We'd like to help you get your child on the path to a brighter and more confident future. Give us a call at 866-BRAIN-01 or visit learningrx.com. That's learningrx.com. And we're back talking to the parenting strategist, Lillian Rieke. So Lillian, you've written six books. Tell mm -hmm. us about your favorite and why it's your favorite. Okay, so my absolute favorite, and I've got it here because I was hoping you would ask me, <laughs> is The Revolting Child, A Blessing in Disguise. So this is our story from my pregnancy right through until my son was just prior to 16. And the reason this is my favorite, so I wrote this book in about six weeks. I just, it was just all in my head. It was my story. It was really easy to write. And this, this story is so um, special to me because it came after we had transformation. So when we went through the very, very challenging time um, from my son, particularly between about 13 and 15, I mean, he was um, in a really bad place. He was in trouble at school, like he was constantly being asked to leave school, uh, get suspended from school. He was in trouble with the police. He was um, taking substances, let me just put it this way, that he shouldn't have been. You know, one day, you know, we found him in a drunken stupor in, the, in a gutter that took him two days to sober up. We didn't even know what he'd taken. You know, he was completely defiant and, and, and a huge challenge at home, aggressive, you know, just he put strain on all of our relationships, you know, myself with my husband, with my other son, who's eight years older. 
And when we came out of that because of the mentoring that we were doing, um, I really just wanted to share it with people. And I'd never been so transparent. So in my other two books, it was more, you know, instructional stuff, but I didn't get too personal. Um, and there was a, a level of, and I don't know if other people can relate to this, but a level of shame from a parenting perspective, embarrassment, you know, and, and I am a very positive person and I love to, to, you know, for people to look at and see me that way. And I was in a really dark place when this was all happening. So when we came through it, you know how you just get like an aha, like a, a nudge from the universe that says you've got to share this. So I actually spoke to my family, to my husband, to my eldest son and, and my youngest son. And I said, this is what I want to do, but I want to tell the whole story and all the dirty laundry and everything. And they're all like, ah. <laughs> you know? and, and I said to, to my youngest son, it's mainly going to be about you, love. And, and he was only like, not even quite 16 when I started writing this. And because I think I published it in May and he turned 16 in June. So he was nearly 16. And he looked at me and he said, Mum, you know, if you tell the whole story and from everybody's perspectives, I'm happy for you to share. And I was like pleasantly surprised. So it goes through everything from my pregnancy um, right through to all of the challenges he had when he was in, in preschool and then, you know, the, the journey that we had in between. But most importantly, it talks about the journey we had and the healing and what we did and what we learned at the end. And I recall um, Amy and Sandra when um, the book was published because it's self-published, it's not fancy. It's I did the whole thing from start to finish. I literally just sent it to the printer and said, there you go, print it. I did that with all of my books, so they're not professionally done. Um, and but I won't call myself a, a book, you know, <laughs> expert, but I've written six that way. And anyway, so when we were doing the and this is why this is so precious to me. So when we were doing the um, sorry, it's a bit of a story to get to the actual. Oh, no, point. it's a wonderful when, story. We're captivated. <laughs> <laughs> when we when we were doing the book launch. And I have to contain myself because I still get emotional with this. So when we were doing the book launch, my son came along. And my husband and I had shared our story. It was an audience of about 200 people. And then we had Q&A. So, if, you know, a few people had asked my husband and I some questions. And then somebody put their hand up and said, can we ask your son a question? And he was just sitting quietly at the back. And I, you know, looked at him and he's like, oh, okay, kind of thing, you know, quite timid about it. And he stood up and the person said, can we ask you, we've heard your story, we've heard your, you know, where you were just, you know, 10 months ago, because the transformation was so incredible. And we see where you are today. What was it that took you from where you were? And I haven't really talked about how bad things were. They were bad. They were really bad. Like we were, my husband and I were beside ourselves with worry about his future. And it was tough. And, and we had had this transformation, not saying it was perfect, but we certainly had a huge transformation. And Caleb, my son, just, I could see his mind ticking over and just took a couple of seconds. And my ears were like, you know, I need to hear the answer to this question. What a great question this person has asked. And he took a breath and he said, When I saw the effort that my mum and dad went to to be the best parents they could be, I wanted to be the best son. And that was like, oh, my God, you know, this, this is why I need to get out and share this because, you know, I, that feeling of knowing that that effort we'd made, you know, and, the, and, the, you know, and, that, and that's still 12 years ago, right? He was 16. He's now 28. And... Currently, I mean, from then until now, he writes me beautiful, you know, letters of recognition. He brings me flowers regularly. He and his partner live with us and um, he buys her flowers. He buys me flowers. You know, he's just such a beautiful young man. And he, you know, acknowledges and recognises me for the work I'm doing. And even though he's not always happy about me talking about our journey, but he knows it's my passion. So he gives me permission to, to share the story uh, even though, you know, he goes, oh, it's embarrassing, mum, you know, but um, that's why this is my absolute favourite book. And um, 
I would be very happy for you to give this away to your listeners. So I think I've already sent you the link that people could, um, if you're happy to share that, then they can actually just pop their details in and they can download this book for free. Um, on that same link, Amy and Sandra, if people want to join my Facebook group, they can. And then that way they'll find out information about my upcoming masterclass. Um, if they're interested in, in coming and having a listen to that. And on that masterclass, I'm going to have myself, my eldest son, who is the naturopath, and my husband, who doesn't usually join us, but he's going to pop on and share from the perspective of a, of a dad, because the transformation that my husband and my son had is even more profound than mine, because my husband and my son are so similar. <laughs> they clashed really badly when he was going through his challenging times. And my husband was being protective of me because my son was very abusive to me, you know, verbally abusive, and my husband wasn't coping. So my husband and my son have worked together now for 10 years in such beautiful harmony. They're in business together. They're electrical contractors. They have a really huge, successful business because people are blown away, first of all. They don't know their story, but they're blown away that they're father and son, and they just have this beautiful respect for each other. In 10 years, they have not had one harsh word. Like they work up to, you know, 10, sometimes 12 hour days together. And they have such a beautiful relationship. And I can tell you what, 10 years ago or so, that was not the scene, you know, like that was, you know, that was, you know, 12 years or so ago, sorry. They were clashing big time. So it's just, it's just such a beautiful, yeah, uh, such a beautiful thing to see. Well, I, I appreciate your willingness to be vulnerable and open about your journey because we can hear about um, parenting tips and parenting strategies and guidance and discipline ideas all day, and they all sound good. But when you put a face and a story to mm -hmm. those strategies and tips, and you can see how someone can go from just such a deep, dark place and struggle mm -hmm. to coming out the other end successfully, right? I mean, and better, it seems, than it, than it ever was. Yeah. Um, I mean, that is such a story of hope, you know, that moms want to know, they want to hear. And so thank you for for Thank being you for so letting open me share with it. your story. And I'm really excited and honored um, that you're willing to give your story, your book to our um, listeners. Um, I can't wait to read it all. <laughs> you, you're, going to, you're going to see a different side. Like it's, it, it's actually, you know, healing really because, you know, like even my sister who I'm so close with and my mum who was alive then, you know, they didn't even know the extent. We even moved states so that we could just, you know, get away. Like we just, we just, we, we, we just wanted to try and cope with it in our own little, you know, box. And if there are other families out there like that, like I just want to say there is hope, you know, that we, you know, that there, there are ways to, to improve this. And, and really, you know, the answer for us was so simple. And I love what, you know, my, our parenting coach said, if you have, that's why I've called this the revolting child. Um, there's a story and we, we could talk for hours, but there's a story why it's called the revolting child, a blessing in disguise. But the person who became our mentor um, did a, a talk called the revolting child, as in the act of revolt, not revolting, disgusting, revolting. Right, right. Because <laughs> people go, oh, that's a very negative, you know, title for your book. But um, yeah, there's there's quite a story there, and you'll 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 get to to read it all in the book. But um, the way we met our mentor was like I don't know if you girls believe in the law of attraction and the universe, but the way we met our mentor was just absolutely incredible. Just the the thin threads, you know, that can change your life. But you know, learning from him that if you have a revolting child then it's not the child we need to look at, it's us as parents, you know, that it's the way that, you know, we are communicating with that child. And, you know, one child could react okay to regular upside down parenting. 
as in my first son who was compliant, you know, cooperative, etc. But once again, you'll read in this book, you'll need your tissues because there's a few stories in here. Um, my eldest son, who was quiet, um, self-entertaining, very, um, very detailed, very deep thinker. He still is as an adult, you know, very intellectual. He's got three degrees. He's such a detailed person, amazing man. Um, but he went through a tough time. And this is something else I want to share with parents, if, I, if you'll indulge me, is that it's not always the challenging child because the good kid or the compliant, the cooperative kid once again, with our upside down parenting, they don't get the connection and energy they want because all of the attention goes to the kid with the challenges. Yes. So when my son was about 13 and I did not know this until I asked him to, to, so I did not know this for 10 years. So I think my eldest son was in his early twenties when this was written, he's now 35. Um, he uh, attempted suicide. He actually got up in a tree and, and made a noose and put it around his neck and, and was, was going to take his life because everything was too tough for him at home. And he wasn't feeling recognised and acknowledged. And I didn't know that until he was an adult, you know, and I'm like, I knew like he got like, I knew that he was depressed when he was younger because of like he had eight years of, of no little brother who, who came in to disrupt the family. And then all of a sudden this little brother came into the family and, and was totally, you know, making his life a, a big challenge. So he struggled as well. And I didn't realize how profoundly until, until this book. So that's another reason this is really special. So when you talk about my book, like the other books are all awesome and there's great information, but this is the book. This is the heart book, yeah. I agree with Amy. I just love that um, your vulnerability just really shares that we're not alone. And uh, I'm, a sook. I'm a sook at the best yeah. of times. I've, I've had, I've done seminars in the past where men and women alike, I've had everybody cry because it does. It's amazing how, you know, when you start talking about it again, even though it was such a long time ago, but just those memories, but it's not even so much the memory of where things were it's the, the, the happiness of where things are now and just that little bit of a like, but where could they have been? You know, how different things could have been. And like even my elder son and my younger son, they clashed big time and now they're best of friends. They hang out, they do stuff together, they travel together. They, you know, they do, you know, they just, they're just really good friends. They have common projects that they work on together and, it's a, like my whole family, I'm so blessed. Like our, all of our relationships with each other are so beautiful. And, and I really believe anybody who takes on the nurtured heart approach in their home, like it's not, it's not a set of strategies that you'll just learn and go, oh yeah, these are some good parenting strategies. I really see the nurtured heart approach as a way of being. And it's something that I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. Like it's, it's how I now communicate with people. It reminds me of a, I heard a talk from TD Bishop Jakes a couple of years ago, and he was talking about how your family is your love gymnasium. <laughs> Where, your what, sorry? Your family is your love gymnasium, that if you can't learn how to love the people in your family and, you know, love yourself, and then the people that, you know, God uh, has placed around you, yeah. then how are you going to love anybody else? And I just, that always I stuck it. with me and I love I feel your the nurtured heart approach seems like it would fall right in line with that kind of thinking that like you've got to yeah. learn how to love the people closest to you, um, even in difficult times. So especially in difficult times. Yeah, right. because let's face it, it's not just kids who seek recognition. We all do. We all love right. to be acknowledged. We all love to to, to be seen, you know, and, and I think especially in today's climate, right, with all the negativity that's happening, you know, it's just nice. Like I use the nurtured heart approach when I go into a shop. You know, for example, the other day I went into a shop and the lady at the counter was folding the clothes so beautifully. You know how sometimes you buy clothes and they kind of just shove them in the bag. Well, she was folding them beautifully and she put tissue paper around and I just acknowledged her for her, you know, you know, I just said to her, I love the way that you're taking such care of the way that, you know, you're folding and presenting the clothes and, you know, and, and, and really being, 
particular with them and what that shows me is that you care about your customers and and that you want the clothes to be you know unpacked and they're and this you know that they're, they're nice and and free spree or whatever I said and she looked at me as if to go oh my gosh I've never had anybody recognize me <laughs> for how I fold the clothes and then we were chatting for about like another five or ten minutes after that and we were getting on quite quite nicely and um, people just crave recognition and it's not just our children and you know we also have to look at our own greatness on my Facebook page if you go on my Facebook page every day I I'm, I'm going through A to Z I am the greatness of, and, and I'm just recognizing myself for my own greatness. And sometimes, you know, people call that ego, you know, that's quite egotistical to, to call yourself out on those greatnesses. But, you know, why, I don't know why pe people are, are so, you know, unwilling to call out their own greatness. You know, why, why is it that we as adults don't see our own greatness and don't recognize our own greatness you know it, it, it comes from I don't know programming you know we get to a certain age when we're kids I can remember when I was a teacher even you know the, the little kids when they got they got an award their faces you know would light up and they'd be proud and then the older the kids got like they'd try and be cool like it's not cool to 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 be recognized so um yeah it's um yeah it's something that actually fascinates me to, to right you know to today yeah so true mm. so oh, go, ahead. Oh, go ahead amy no oh, you go ahead Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> i was just you had mentioned your parenting classes um a, a bit ago and you kind of told us a little bit about that um who who tends to come to your parenting classes who do you really love to nurture and reach out to um I'm assuming it's parents with kids of all ages and, you know, all demographic backgrounds. And it sounds like you were mentioned earlier uh, before we got on the podcast that you were on a call in the States. So it's global too, right? Yeah, Can you tell absolutely. us more? Well, my, my thinking around that is who my ideal avatar is, who I love to attract is a parent who wants better relationships with their kids. So that could be anybody in my current class, I have um, single parents, single mums, single dads. I have kind of regular mum and dad families with three kids. I have two women who are on representing the family as grandparents. I have um, doctors. Um, I have just about, yeah, any, any, anybody who really just wants better relationships. I could probably just as easy call myself a relationship coach you know, with what we do, but I, I love to zone in, in on parenting, of course, because that's my passion, because what we teach really is beneficial for everybody and all relationships. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't limit who comes into my classes, like anybody who really just wants to improve their relationships. However, in saying that, Sandra, I do tend to attract um, families who are having challenges with their children. Mm -hmm. um, I get a lot of phone calls from, from people who, oh, I've heard about what you do and, you know, they want to tell me their story of their challenging child. And, and it's really great from the perspective, and I think you mentioned this before, Sandra that, and, and Amy, that I've lived this because people like to know that they're not alone. And when I tell my story and people probably go, phew, well, I'm not even as bad as that, you know. So, you know, it gives people a bit of hope. But they love to hear, I think people love to hear a story of triumph, don't they? Like, you know, somebody who's been through the trenches and got through and actually, you know, um, come through with, with flowing colours at the other end. So, yeah, in answer to your question, anybody really who wants better relationships with their children predominantly, um, I've had many of my course participants say this is much more than a parenting course. It's also a personal development course. And of course, when I bring my son in, um, we cover a lot of health as well, health and, and well-being as well. So very holistic and, and very, yeah, I, I kind of just zone into who needs me, you know, like who, who and, and just attract people that way. And so is it a, a one-time seminar? Does it last over time? What does that look like for people? Great who question. 
So the current program that I'm doing, we did week 19 last, last uh, this week and next week will be week 20 and that will be the end of the course. So what I like to do is like I used to do the Nurtured Heart Approach six, uh, like the six week course in a weekend and it was just too much information for parents and it was just too overwhelming. So what I've been doing in the last couple of courses is I really spread it out. So I have, um, so first of all, we do a free masterclass, like an introductory course, uh, which is uh, for people just to come and, and get a feel for who we are and what we do. And then if they want to come and work with us, we have um, courses. So I do a week, an instructional week. So where you learn stuff and then um, home play to go and practice what we learn. And then the following week is just a, an open Q&A, come and share your wins, come and share your challenges, what questions do you have? So we don't learn that week, we just, and that's, that's actually probably where people get most from it because people are interacting, oh, Amy did this, you know, Sandra did that, oh, that's, a, you know, like, and people interact and share and, and your question, Amy, could help Sandra, like, you know, we just do that. And then the following week we go into instruction again. So whilst it might just be, 10 weeks of instruction, I take it over 20 weeks. Um, so that we really, and I get guest speakers in as well. Like I have some um, medical, you know, holistic doctors that might come in and share or psychologists and different people who can bring value to the, to the um, group. Excellent. And that's available through, like it's virtual? Yes, we do it on Zoom, just like we are now. And um, all of the sessions um, are available for the participants to, um, to watch again, or if they missed it, they'll be recorded just within the, in the private group. So I run a private group for that. So only the people who are doing the course are in the private group, but I also have a public page where I share a lot of information as well. Um, but the private group is where all the juicy stuff is, of course, because that's, yeah, that's where we have all those, you know, really personal interactions. And I, I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. However, just with time, I just find the group, um, the group sessions are um, more productive, but sometimes parents just want that one-on-one. -on -one, so I do offer those as well. Excellent. Well, we are out of time, and so cool. we do need to wrap up. But it went was, really fast. I know it did, it right? Very fast. <laughs> um, but this has been a fantastic conversation um, oh, today. We just want to thank you, um, parenting strategist Lily and Riki, for sharing just your heart, your journey, your experience, and some takeaways um, with our listeners. I just really appreciate that you spent this hour with us. Um, you. If you'd like to connect with Lillian or learn more about her books or her courses, you can visit theparentingstrategist.com.au. She is in Australia, so make sure you put that .au after that. We will actually put that link and her social media handles along with the link to download a free copy of her book, The Revolting Child. Um, we'll put all of that in the show notes for you. Um, so thanks so much for listening today. If you liked our show, we would love it if you would leave us a review or rating or both on Apple Podcasts. If you would rather watch us, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Brainy Moms. Um, follow us on social media at The Brainy Moms and at Dr. Underscore Amy Moore. And look, until next time, we know you're busy moms and we're busy moms. So we're out. <laughs>